That's a great question. I mean, that, that's getting into the real nitty gritty of what is mindfulness and why is it useful or interesting. So the body and the brain are capable of doing amazing things. And clearly the more that we train ourselves athletically and the more skilled we get, the more that we can do those things automatically without thinking. And that's when it's possible to get into what athletes call a flow state or the zone where the body's just doing it. And that can happen with varying degrees of mindfulness. So mindfulness is the open awareness and knowing that that's happening and appreciating and enjoying it. So a flow state can happen with a lower, a lower degree of mindfulness where it's just sort of happening, but you're not that present. You're just sort of in it. Or it can happen where uh, one analogy you could use is that the body is a horse and we're riding the horse. So the horse has a separate consciousness than the rider and the horse is doing its thing wonderfully and beautifully. But how present is the rider with what's happening with the horse? That's the mindfulness being completely present with it, with all of your senses. So you're not distracted in either case, because if you're distracted, you're not in a flow state, you're not in the zone. The zone is complete and utter presence with the activity, but then is there presence knowing that you're doing the activity, knowing that it's happening. And all of the sights and sounds and sensations associated with that activity. In other words, is the focus so pinpointed that you're not even aware, let's say you're skiing, of the sky and the critters that are around and the texture of the snow and the sounds of it all. So mindfulness would, would open to the entire experience taking the skill level and then allowing that skill level to support an open awareness of all of the different aesthetic and sensual aspects of that experience that you're fully participating in and not just flying down a slope, let's say. As we get better skill-wise at a certain activity, at a certain sport, then we tend to want to do it faster, better, more rare, so you know, do the thing that nobody else has done, and then that gives us a certain kind of charge or a certain kind of gratification that that feels really good. But the problem is, is that it's it's always more, more, more. It's just like everything else in Western culture: bigger, more, more of it, <laughs> faster, better, and that that's self-limiting. You can't, and especially as we start to get older. But the idea with mindfulness is that we're after satisfaction. And even a breath can be incredibly interesting and incredibly satisfying. So if breathing can be incredibly interesting and incredibly satisfying, which it can be from a meditative perspective, then something as intricate as skiing, even if it's not the biggest and baddest thing that you've ever done, can still be incredibly interesting and satisfying. And so learning how to get into the moment and just see the magic and the miracle of each moment of the body going uphill or downhill and being able to make turns and being able to experience the texture of the snow and the, the, the way the air feels and the way the sky looks and the way the birds are and the way the trees are, all of that is rich. And if you can get into that, all of that while you're skiing, then no matter what you're doing, whether it's something you've done a thousand times, it's easy, it's hard, it's challenging, or it's just like, hey, we're just out bopping around, it can be just as satisfying. And that, that's really the magic of mindfulness when you bring it into an athletic or outdoor pursuit. So there's a lot of research now coming out about the benefits of being in nature and wilderness for humans, for people, whether it's people who are quote unquote normal psychologically and emotionally, um, elevating their sense of well-being and diminishing stress by being in nature. And then for people who have trauma or PTSD or emotional or psychological issues, 
um, that being a very healing thing to be in nature. And uh, there are more and more therapeutic modalities that are taking people into nature and structuring their experience around the idea of paying attention to their direct experience, which is mindfulness, not bringing in uh, conversations that aren't directly related to what's happening right now, but really opening the senses, sound, body sensations, um, sights, and our direct emotional experience and paying attention to those things while we're in nature. And it's very healing. And if you think about it, like that's where humans came from. I mean, before we had technology and all this stuff that we've created on the planet, we were basically running around in nature. That's all we did. That was how we evolved. That's the basic, um, that's a baseline for human behavior is, well, we're just running around in nature. And now we live, we're still nature. I mean, everything that we are is still part of nature but we've disassociated from it through technology, through all this stuff that we have. And it's good stuff. I mean, I like my stuff, like everybody likes their stuff. You know, I mean, life is better with a good cup of coffee than it was before they had that, etc. But that distancing from being in nature is not what we've evolved to do and our brains need it. Our minds need it, our hearts need it. 